everyone. Welcome to another Classic Movie Monday, and today I thought it would be interesting to discuss a romantic comedy film again, but one that I think is rather different from When Harry Met Sally, which I discussed in my previous Classic Movie Monday. So without further ado, let me continue this month of love by discussing The Princess Bride, as you can probably see by the title. The Princess Bride was made in the 80s, same as when Harry met Sally. Uh, two years earlier, actually, 1987. Um, and uh, the interesting thing about The Princess Bride is, is that it usually re revolves around British humor, and for the most part, I believe uh, the majority of the actors are British or at least the ones that do play the major roles, um, because they do try to display accents um, that uh, that are very British, and the humor doesn't really seem at least uh, American, from what I can tell, uh, because it's it has that sort of dryness to it um, that I think a lot of people within the British culture like. So that's why I think um, this film had a lot of uh, British influence. Um, and uh, it, uh, instead of being a sort of romantic comedy in its purest form, like When Harry Met Sally, it is a romantic comedy slash adventure film because The Princess Bride is basically sort of a fairy tale. Um, and it sort of starts off, starts off in that format. Um, it, it really does present itself as a fairy tale, because uh, you will see in the beginning there is this grandpa who reads this story that ultimately ends up being the story within the film to his grandson at the beginning. Um, so they really do try to tell the audience right off the bat that this is a fairy tale and that this is designed to be um, not really based so much within the grounds of reading. It makes it something unique compared to um, When Harry Met Sally, which basically takes place in the real world. Um, and uh, the interesting thing about um, this film as well is not only its um, humor and its somewhat, I guess, memorable lines, um, for example, inconceivable and, you know, the you killed my father, prepare to die line. Uh, there is also, um, I think, a lot of things that go on within this plot. Um, they do try to make it very plot heavy. Um, I, again, it does have character moments and they do give moments for the characters to breathe. But at the same time, I feel like there was a lot going on within this film, and they wanted to really showcase that. Because as you will see, it seems to start off simply. We have this farm girl named Buttercup, who ultimately is betrothed to a prince named Prince Humperdinck. Um, I believe that's how you pronounce it, Humperdinck, yep. And uh, while at the same time, uh, it is established that... Um, she has this farm boy who is her friend, um, whose name is, I want to make sure I pronounce it right, it's Wesley, I believe, that's how you pronounce it, and, uh, at this, but at the same time, she still accepts the proposal when, um, Prince Humperdinck, uh, comes along. Um, so uh, it kind of establishes that there wasn't a whole lot of development between her and the farm boy to begin with, because ultimately the farm boy, aka Wesley, ends up really becoming the hero sort of of the film um, and uh, being the sort of center of attention. Um, although it, the film does go in between what's going on with Buttercup and then what's going on with Wesley, um, but, uh, even though she is betrothed, she ultimately ends up getting captured by some outlaws, and this is where we're introduced to sort of our side characters, one guy named Vizzini, 
who's like a Sicilian boss. Um, Fesky, Fesic, who's supposed to be a giant. And Inigo Monti, Montia, Montiata, Montia, Montiata. Um, I apologize, I'm horrible with names. Uh, probably the most famous side character. Um, prepare to die. That's that. That's his line. Uh, so, uh, they ultimately end up capturing her for their own reasons, and you will see the reasons once you watch the film. And then you'll ultimately see how Wesley sort of comes into this picture and how ultimately their love sort of ends up blossoming and um, how the prince ultimately, prince, uh, yeah, Prince Humperdinck, who ends up really being sort of the villain of the film, uh, tries to get Buttercup back so he can have her as his own. Um so that's really the essence of the plot for the most part. There's a lot of little detours and twists and turns. And I think this is probably something that might deter audiences because I think it's one of those divisive classics because on the one hand, I do understand people's annoyance with the fact that the film doesn't have a huge amount of focus onto one specific thing. But at the same time, I like the fact that it expands and does different things and just kind of uh, just has these random funny moments where just you just have these little uh, character interactions and you see how everybody sort of works off one another. So at the same time, I, I kind of think that ultimately how the Princess Bride handled those things, I think worked fairly well to the film's advantage. Now, I don't think this film is all that funny, actually. Um, I think there are funny moments within this film, but I wouldn't say I'm really laughing out loud and, you know, um, thinking that it's, uh, that it, it's just not the kind of humor that I would really laugh to, but it's sort of the humor that I can enjoy. Like, it, it's enjoyable humor. It's just not, it, it just doesn't make you laugh like on the floor rolling over you know it, it just it, it, it just didn't give that vibe for me but I don't think that was its intention I think its intention was just to be sort of a smart romantic comedy with a little bit of adventure and action which is what it ultimately did and I think it ultimately worked and I would say that probably films like Tangled as well as um uh, probably some later Disney films probably took a lot of inspiration from this film. I apologize for the phone ringing off the hook. I have no idea what's going on. But um, that's really um, the essence of the of the Princess Bride. It, it's its focus is is largely on romance, but there is a lot of other plot. Things that sort of end up sort of getting in the way of that ultimate ro ultimate moment where um, the couple ultimately Wesley and Buttercup end up be end up getting together. So you sort of see that kind of journey take place, um, and the characters I think are fairly developed. Well, I feel like um, Buttercup is a uh, fun character. I also think Wesley is tons of fun. The side characters are, are, are enjoyable. So I think overall character wise, as far as the plot's construction, I think is ultimately what the film intended. And I think it worked because um, it knew how to sort of play off all of these things that were uh, going on and in mixing these genres together. But I can understand why some audiences may not feel the exact same way I do when it comes to this film. Because again, I think it is one of those films where you can, there's a lot of people who can find value and enjoyment, and there's a lot of other people who can find a lot to uh, criticize. But I still consider it a classic because, again, I think it kind of got the ball rolling for like ideas within the future when it comes to incorporating, you know, kind of romance with that. Um, with that swashbuckling adventure that we also enjoy. Um, I, I also think that as far as its humor goes and its lines, I think are also fairly iconic. People remember them. 
they remember certain moments within the film, you know, just certain expressions that the characters make. Um, it's it's probably the the Monty Python of romantic comedy in the sense that whenever I think of this film, I think of the Monty Python humor because again, it's British, so it it kind of just feels the same in that sense. But again, it offers something unique. It offers something a little different um, because its focus is not um, just primarily on humor, uh, even though humor is a part of it. So I think it ultimately ends up ge um, gelling out the adventure aspect and the romance and the comedy out fairly well. They seem to be very balanced and they seem to jive with one another. But I can understand if some people feel it doesn't jive as well as they want it to, because I think it really, this is a very sort of, I think, opinionated film in that there's a lot of different things people can take out of it. Um, but mostly from what I've had and what I've experienced watching this film is, is that it's sort of fun. And uh, I really like the sort of, um, this, I like it sort of when the film pauses and then the, it goes back to the, uh, grandpa and the, and the grandson and, um, you know, they sort of share a couple of moments here and there. And I thought that was enjoyable because I think it's just something that's very identifiable and something that I think a lot of people can find an enjoyment and value of, especially when they're trying to teach and read these stories to kids. So <laughs> I think it really worked uh, in that sense. So there's just a lot. Um, I think there's a lot to like, um, but I can understand if the humor is not for some people and I can understand if the, um, if, uh, if, 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 if combining all of these different things, uh, ultimately didn't work. I would say the romance and the adventure aspect are probably the strongest parts of the film, actually. I would say it's comedy is, it, it's sort of hit and miss for me, but, um, I do enjoy, uh, a large, um, extensive amount of it because it does keep the focus where it should be. The romance between Wesley and, uh, Buttercup is somewhat uh, believable in that they do take time for some development between the two um and you do feel there's a sense of genuineness there uh and it's and there's still a lot of fun to it as well they don't try to make it so serious um and uh and I sort of like um what they did with this with this film um it but I can understand if it doesn't gravitate to some audiences as much as others um but I think it's just one of those films where people look back and and remember even if they don't like it um and uh that's why I would put it in the classic category because I think it did sort of inspire other ideas and I think it got things rolling uh when it comes to trying to incorporate different genres together in this way um so yeah, I think that's really, though, ultimately all I can say about the film without giving too much away. Um, there's a lot of plot that goes on within this film, so if I keep talking about really what ends up happening, um, then you'd probably ruin it for some viewers. But ultimately all you need to know is, is, is that there's this girl named Buttercup who ends up being betrothed to some prince, uh, and in this case Prince Humperdinck, he ends up becoming the villain, and there are outlaws who capture her, and that results in a entire adventure um, that ends up leading to what ultimately ends up happening in the climax. So, in that sense, that's really the best I can do without giving really too much away. And you'll see how Wesley becomes part of this plot as well. Um, the farm boy slash superman in this movie even though he's <laughs> he, he's he's a multitude of different things uh throughout so uh just be prepared for that uh but yeah i think that's really ultimately all i can say about the princess bride it's it's a it it's straightforward in the sense that it's in it in what it's trying to present um but at the same time there's a lot of different plot threads that ultimately end up tying together and i definitely don't want to give that away but thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a pleasant day, week, month, and year. 
and I hope to see you all in the next video where I'll be discussing romantic songs for the music talk. So feel free to stay tuned for that. But until next time, everybody.